Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Secretary Holland, the Mineral Leasing Act requires the Department to hold quarterly lease sales in each state with federal oil and gas resources. That's one lease sale every three months in each state with the resources. So in the nine quarters since President Biden took office, the Department has held a grand total of one lease sale in each of these states, a single lease sale in over two years. Now, I'm glad to see the Department has now announced plans to hold lease sales in the second and third quarters of this year. My question is, will you commit to resuming oil and gas lease sales each and every quarter going forward as required by law? Thank you very much for the question, Senator. And of course, we follow the law and everything we do. Uh, we have had lease sales. We'll continue to have lease sales. I know that uh, President Biden believes in um, energy independence, and we were working toward that goal. Well, let me just point out, you just said we follow the law, but you haven't followed the law. Under oath, during your confirmation hearings, you, sit, you sat here and you said, I will absolutely follow the law. But yet, for nine quarters since President Biden took office, the department has held only one lease sale. So I don't know how you consider that following the law. So the question again is, will you commit to resuming oil and gas lease sales each and every quarter going forward as required by law? Yes or no? Senator, we will always follow the law. With you haven't been following the law. Yes or no, please answer the question. Yes or no, will you commit sitting here to resuming oil and gas lease sales each and every quarter going forward as required by law? Senator, in 2022, we had lease sales in Wyoming, Colorado, Montana, the Dakotas, Nevada, and New Mexico. One there lease sale when the required law required that you have had nine quarters worth of leases. So you haven't been following the law. Yes or no going forward? We, we are planning 12 onshore lease sales that are in the planning process for 2023. And we're currently planning multiple sales in Wyoming beginning in June. Montana and North Dakota also beginning in June with additional sales in September and December. Utah, Nevada, and New Mexico, which could we, be- We know what all the public land states are. That's a good list. The question is, going forward next year, will you commit to following the law each and every quarter as required by law? Senator, we will follow the law. Well, you haven't been doing it so far. Let me move on, uh, Mr. Chairman. Last month, the Bureau of Land Management proposed a fundamental change in American land management policy. This illegal proposal, and it is illegal and it doesn't follow the law, would make non-use of lands a competing use. Your proposal would give radical environmentalists a new tool to block activities that are guaranteed in the law, such as grazing, recreation, and mineral development. Please explain why you think putting large swaths of federal lands off limits upholds the multiple use mandate in the law. Senator, thank you very much for the question. And the public lands rule uh, is actually uh, a proposed draft rule uh, currently in public comment period. Uh, that would uh, essentially put conservation on equal footing with our multi-use mandate. Uh, it would not foreclose other uses of our public lands, such as grazing or mining or energy development. Well, the so-called public lands rule that you refer to is nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to eliminate economic activities on federal lands in Wyoming and across the West, and I would strongly urge you to withdraw this disastrous and illegal proposal. Um, next, earlier this year, uh, you blocked access to federal minerals uh, in an area that contains 88% of our nation's known cobalt reserves. Cobalt's a critical mineral necessary for electric vehicle batteries. Uh, do you know where most of the world's cobalt is mined today? I beg your pardon, do you, sir? Do you know where to, most of the world's cobalt is mined today? Uh, I'm sure you'll tell me. Well, it's the, yeah, it's the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So in your view, does the Congo or the United States have better environmental standards? Senator, the United States has better environmental standards and better worker standards. So in your view, does the Congo or the U.S. have better protection against child labor? 
Senator, with respect to the issue you're speaking of, I uh, assume that it's the Boundary Water watershed, and uh, that was put to us as a copper mine, not as a cobalt mine. So, so why are you blocking access, though, to our nation's cobalt resources? You, you can't possibly be willing to ignore what's taking place in the Congo. It's been all over the news for years. Here are a couple of headlines in terms of the mine that you, that you blocked. National Public Radio how modern-day slavery in the Congo powers the rechargeable battery uh, economy. The independent. Here, is a better not, here, here it is better, they said, not to be born. Cobalt mining for big tech is driving child labor and deaths in the Congo. The Guardian, like slave labor and master, DRC miners toil for 30 pence an hour and fuel electric cars. The New York Times, Newsweek, go after any of them. Again, why are you blocking access to our nation's cobalt resources? Because that's what you've done. Senator, uh, in near the Boundary Waters watershed, it was put to us as a copper mine. Copper is not a critical mineral in this country. This is a mineral that is needed to fulfill the president's goal on electric vehicles. It's straightforward. You can't get critical minerals without mining. Mining in America is better for our economy. It's better for the environment. It's better for the people of the world. You need to stop blocking access to our nation's resources. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator.